Hi guys, it's Summers here and it's time for another Insight video, this time taking a look at William's latest challenger, the FW43. Now let's not make any bones about it, last year's campaign was a disaster, especially for a team with William's heritage, and so I think we can all hope that they make a better fist of it this season. Straight off the bat, I'm just going to say that the card does look like all the square edges have been knocked off, and hopefully that will result in a better machine all round. I'm going to kick things off in the centre of the car too, as for me that's the most important aspect of this car, as Williams have clearly done a lot of work here and tidied up several loose ends. The team had already appropriated the Ferrari style lower impact spa and requisite periscope cooling inlet last season, but it always looked a little bit clunky, as did the rest of their side pod design. Both though appear to be resolved for 2020, with Williams sporting what seems to be the smallest inlet in their class and frankly some of the smallest pods too. This centres around the changes made by Mercedes HPP and possibly their own use of a liquid to air rather than air to air cooler setup, which reduces the space required within. The shape of the pods remind me of the downwash ramp solution we saw from Red Bull and Sauber back in 2012, as they both looked to get the best from their Coanda style exhaust solutions of the time. In honesty though, it is likely a decision that's been driven by budget rather than technical expertise, but at least they've tried to use this as a step forward. Interestingly, they've retained the hanging vane that wraps vertically around the edge of the side pod undercut. A solution we've not seen other teams take up obviously helps Williams to control the airflow's path around the side pod. So, let's swing back around to the front of the car now and evaluate the changes to their nose, as they've retained the thumb style nose tip but made some significant changes to their cape solution. The team have extended it forward in order to meet the wing pillars, much like we've seen elsewhere on the grid. But bringing the cape forward also means that the team have more space underneath the rear end of the nose and the start of the chassis to deploy some more conventional vertical turning vanes too. It's also apparent that the team have made changes to their front suspension in order to tidy things up aerodynamically. The FW42 already had the now widely used upper wishbone extension, but they tried to fare in all these elements and it led to a rather cumbersome looking assembly. The upper wishbone's inboard position has also been altered slightly, as the team have had to make way for the chassis horns that now protrude from the vanity panel and will enhance the flow out of the S duct. Oddly enough, the team are still not aligning their steering arm with the wishbones in order to make one larger surface. Moving back around to the rear of the car, there's just a couple of noteworthy inclusions. The outlet on the engine cover spine and a small monkey seat winglet above the exhaust that's hung off the two rear wing pillars. All in all, not a bad effort by Williams and one I hope will drag them closer to the field ahead. Now, if you've enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to hit the like button and if you're thirsty for more, subscribe to the channel too.